Hi, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants and this is my indoor nursery. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to get utricularia to flower. Now, this is a very interesting question that gets rephrased and reworded a lot of like, oh, my utricularia XYZ is having a problem. How do I get it to flower? Well, it's not as difficult as you may think. So they all have different requirements is the best way I'd put it. And the best way to start is understanding, like, do you have a terrestrial, an aquatic, an epiphytic, first off. And then the second thing is, where does it live in the world? So you have a better idea of what kind of climate it ex exists in and what kind of factors are going into play in its yearly life. Generally speaking, utricularia have, here up North America, they'll start flowering in the summer and then continue on through the fall and produce their seed and uh, disperse to uh, stratify for winter. Whereas in other places around the world, you'll have uh, flooded utricularia, such as uh, utricularia fulva in Australia, which it requires being flooded and then it dries. And at that drying period is what causes it to uh, start flowering because it basically wants to do its flowering right before conditions get too bad for it to continue existing. Because every year it gets flooded out and then will uh, dry out, start its flowering cycle. Uh, other places around the world, you'll have like epiphytic eutrix. Now they're usually uh, interesting for me because they'll flower typically in uh, early spring. So I'll get them starting sometimes as early as January Right now, I currently even have a few, so it's like throughout the year, but most commonly I'll see mine in the early spring, and it's generally because I'm getting cooler temperatures throughout the uh, day, and as they're slowly starting to warm, it seems like something about that triggers, like my longifolia, for example. Another thing that triggers them is lighting cycle. So depending on how close to the equator the plant grows, will determine how much light cycle affects its life. So for example, a lot of the temperate eutrix that I grow inside here, because I fluctuate my lights between 16 hours during the summer down to around, sometimes it's like 13 and a half, but usually about 14 hours in the winter, that uh, causes almost all of these plants to experience a little bit of a, a shift towards winter in their growth. And because of that, whenever I do that, I'll get all of my uh, temperate eutrix, temperate terrestrial eutrix. Uh, then there's uh, aquatic eutrix. I gotta say, I'm not very uh, familiar with on how to make those flower, just mainly because as you can see, I don't really have an aquarium set up for them. Always been interested in them, and if I ever do get another aquarium set up, definitely gonna toss Aldrovanda and some aquatic eutrix in there and see what happens. However, uh, to my knowledge, they're also seasonally uh, affected. So if you're trying to grow in a more tropical climate, and I couldn't name any off the top of my head, but you're trying to grow, uh, you know, eutricular area that are aquatic somewhere in uh, Florida, for example, would be a good place. You're gonna probably want to find aquatic species native to uh, tropical areas, and you'll have the best chance of success. Not to say that some of the other tropical species won't be, you know, very uh, floriferous, because you can get some species, uh, at least in the terrestrials, like uh, for me, Sandersonia and uh, Blanchettii are really, really, really good at just, once you get them happy, constantly flowering. So you really run a whole different spectrum of what can make a utricularia flower. My best advice is try to replicate the seasons by lowering your light cycle and then having some kind of seasonal temperature changes to where it's colder in the winter and then hotter during the summer. And somewhere in the cycle, you'll find it'll start flowering. Take note of what was going on. Like, oh, temperature going up from this to this, plus the light going up from this to this, or temperature going down and light going down, or some combination of these factors. And you'll generally really nail it down to a science. What's sad is that I've tried to get that really fine-tuned for myself and 
it's working for me, but your mileage may vary if I tell you, oh, it's exactly at 75 degrees to this, to this. So it's, it's why I don't exactly recommend like, oh, with Volvo, you got to do exactly this and this. It's like, I just know that whenever people leave it completely flooded, like flood the entire pot for a week or two and then just let it dry entirely, triggers flowering. Like those kind of tips, I can let you know just because uh, that's actually my experience. That's what I know. That's where it's like uh, the aquatics, I believe it's just more or less temperature and lighting will affect their uh, their tendency to flower. As a uh, rule of thumb, though, a lot of Australian Utrechts are very sim similar to Fulva in that they require like, you know, some seasonal dryness to actually induce the uh, flowering, but then some of them are even annual. So it's kind of a double-edged sword of, do you want to flower it? Do you want to take a plug of it and then flower it? So there's a there's ways around uh, your annuals dying if you uh, do so wish to keep them. And that would be a topic for another rant, though. However, thank you so much for watching. If you found this at least a little bit of in insightful or helpful at all, please like, subscribe. If you uh, have any questions or any ideas for a future rant video, please leave it in the comments. If you want to come talk plants, you can join the Carnivorous Plant Discord. Links in the uh, description as well as a link to my website where you can support me directly by buying a beautiful plant of your own. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.